just hanging out with the owner and uh, the builder of this place, Robert Lang, which is kind of amazing, just seeing into his vision. And then he started talking about building a new studio down in Mexico, of course, and our ears perked right up. Uh, part of this new record was recorded down and written down in Mexico City, uh, which was, you know, a blast getting a chance to go hang out down there. And um, so maybe you'll hear some of that in the music. But uh, we're going to talk some more later on. Uh, we're going to start off this set with a song called When the Angels Played. And this is a co write between uh, Pieter Brown and myself. You were looking for silver, looking for gold. You never did feel the wind turning cold. Always said you didn't need that much anymore You were carrying the weight of the wild Running around with all that bait So you never did feel my hand in the rain You were dreaming deep down in the night Dreaming all of your days Oh, you never did wake when the angels played well, fire in the tunnel, fire in the wash, in the ringing of the bells. Oh, you never did wake when the angels played. Maybe you'll find your silver, maybe you'll find your gold. Maybe we'll meet again on the road sometime. Well, storm in December, storm in July. Stand in the door when you say goodbye. Oh, you never did wake when the angels play. Yeah. Well, fire in the tunnel, fire in the wash, and the ringing of the bells. Oh, you never did wake when the angels play. Well, maybe you'll find your silver, maybe you'll find your gold Maybe we'll meet again on the road sometime Well, storm in December, storm in July Standing in the door when you say goodbye Oh, well, you never did wake when the angels play December, storm in July Standing in the door when you say goodbye We well, you never did wake when the angels played Yeah, well, you never did wake when the angels played That's Sergio Mendoza on the piano and all the keys over here. Great solo. And on the bass and vocals, Ryan Alfred as well. And I'm Joey Burns, and this is Calexico. Kind of a smaller version than what we normally do, but it's kind of fun to do these. I've been enjoying them more and more, and uh, it just it's nice to kind of relax and play these songs acoustically. And um, this next song is a song called Falling from the Sky. One, two, one, two, three, four.
house in the sea. Well, that last song, uh, you know, we have a very young audience member here today. <laughs> How old is she? 20 months. Congratulations. It's so great that you're here with your, your daughter. Oh, yeah. I know that stuff. I've got two of you at home. I've got twin daughters at home, and that last song uh, was kind of inspired by some of the children's books that I really got into with just the phrasing, so the chorus kind of, kind of couples upon itself. So um, I had left on a big, long trip to New Zealand, and when I arrived, I, um, I wrote those words. So yeah. So power to the 20-month-year-olds. <laughs> Way to go, Mom. All right, we're going to try a song here that's written from the perspective of being very far away from all of this beautiful Puget Sound and water outside our, our studio here. So this is, um, it's called Miles in the Sea. Tracks him down to his knees Where his great grandfather swim Swallowed up, left for dust Just to escape, push the pain to ride Sketches a wave in the soil Dreams about swimming Miles away from the sea Dreams about swimming And the moon turns away Dreams about swimming Miles away from the sea While the moon turns the tide in his heart Yesterday we were in Boise and we played an old song and um, I think we should play that song right now as well. Um, 
it's kind of my go-to song for sound checks, and um, I know that uh, some of my friends like that song a lot. It's called uh, Sunken Waltz, and it's from Feast of Wire, which came out in 2003. So we'll give you a version of it without accordion right now. That's all right. <laughs> all right, this is Sunken Waltz. <laughs> Cardboard crate down in the city of courts. No news, no new regrets. Tossed a Susan B over my shoulder and prayed it would rain. I think we're going to open it up to our KEXP listeners That's and audience cool. members now. That sounded so wonderful. Thank you so much. You know, I, I realized when I was doing that song, when we were playing it, that I got a, a message um, last night from the guy who inspired that last verse. His name is Michael Meng, and now he lives in Hawaii. And he's kind of like this John Muir character for me. You know, he's somebody that I grew up with. He was always, you know, kind of distant in some ways, but always very kind. And it turns out that you know he had wound up going somewhere deep into you know the into the mountains of California to just build a treehouse and live there and just live off the land and um, and give back to the land too. So now he lives somewhere in uh, in Hawaii, I think. And uh, he wrote this beautiful you know statement of what he's doing and how much the music and that song meant to him. So if you can hear us, Mike, uh, it's good to hear back from you. I love hearing all of your stories, and so deep they are filled with people's lives. But almost every time you tell a story about a song or a person, there's a geographical location <laughs> attached to it. And I, I imagine that you love to travel. And are the stories about the people often tied to geography for you? Well, um, yeah, I guess so. I mean, we all are here on the planet, and, and I think that it, it's, it's a good way in, you know, like some of my favorite movies or scenes are when you kind of have that beautiful pan, or there's like just one shot where you kind of start off from, from like a bird's eye view, then you kind of go into the town and maybe go into the kitchen, kind of like a Scorsese thing, you know. I like, I like that, you know, it kind of just informs the story, it frames the direction, and gives a little tone as well, you know. Your last album was influenced by and recorded in New Orleans, and I was surprised to find out that given the nature of this 
you know, the Latin influence of much of your music, that this was the first time that you had recorded in Mexico. Right. So last record was 2012. We recorded some songs down there in, in, uh, in Algiers Point. So we call the album Algiers. And then um, fast forward to the future, and Sergio Mendoza here, uh, through many mutual friends, uh, suggested, hey, let's go down to Coyacan, the neighborhood south of Mexico City, and, uh, and do some writing and recording. So we did. It was a really nice window into starting this record, you know, much like you know, the, the one shot, the Scorsese shot. Um, it really helped me to kind of say, okay, this is the beginning. It's official. And, um, and of course, it was very inspiring being there with lots of great musicians, um, great locale, great food, great architecture, and just the vibe of the people. As Robert Lang was telling us upstairs before this show that he just loves the vibe of the people, and so do we. Have you spent much time down there, even though this was your first time recording? Because obviously Arizona, pretty close. Yeah, I mean, surprisingly, um, I've only been down with the band once before we did a festival in Mexico City. So not that not, not, not enough times for me. Through, throughout your career, spanning a couple of decades, you frequently collaborate with super talented musicians. And this album, certainly no exception, maybe the most guest musicians that I've ever seen. I think almost every song has a guest, maybe except for one. And um, man, what a lineup of people they have helping out there. You did a song today that Ben Bridwell right. is on. Of course, Sam Beam you've worked with before, mm -hmm. Nico Case and Gabby Moreno yeah. and so many other musicians. And a lot of them are singers on this record. And I'm curious, did that come together with a sort of a vision for wanting those voices? Or do you just have so many friends at this point? Um, <laughs> you're like, hey, it'd be fun to get uh, Nick Ureta on this song. Yeah. Or maybe Sam will come in and do something. Yeah. Uh, it it kind of came after the fact. And I think in general, musicians and, and all the guys here have tons of great, talented friends. And, and that's one of the cool things about music is that it brings us all together. And sometimes you don't even have to be physically in the same spot. You can just send tracks, as was the case for several of the collaborations. But there are also some in-studio collaborations, too. Um, I think at some point, um, Sergio and I and, and John and, and a lot of the guys in the studio were just thinking, hey, you know, this, this song, Bullets and Rocks, would be a great song for Sam Beam to sing on. Let's just give him a call or send him a text and see if he's open to it. And he shot back a response right away. And I was really surprised because I know he's got more kids than I do. <laughs> yes, he does. And I was just like, wow. <laughs> That's impressive. It was really impressive. And then that was really fun. And then you get these recordings back. And at the end of that song, he added a refrain, a future is promised to you. And he, and he kind of did this beautiful sort of in and out of time uh, approach to this refrain that we all just fell in love with. And uh, so that's kind of the gift that comes back is the, the gift of surprise and the gift of someone else improvising with your music. And that's, that's fun. It seems like you work with different people in different ways at different times. No album is ever really the same for Colexico, which I'm sure is a wonderful thing for you. And yeah. Sergio has his fingerprints all over this record, even though you've been together for some time. Did yeah. you work together in a different way on this record? Well, I think for me, you know, John was, uh, had moved to, from, uh, from Ohio down to El Paso, Texas, so he couldn't be in the studio as much as he probably liked. So it was nice just having somebody there, you know, to talk to and bounce ideas off of. I've worked with him on his project, uh, Orquesta Mendoza, and of course he's playing here with Calexico for some time. And Ryan as well, you know, Ryan's added a lot of great input in the studio. Both Ryan and Sergio and John and myself were the ones that laid down the foundation for a lot of the songs. And, um, and that was kind of the first time we'd done that in a while, and it was really fun doing that, and we were able to get some really great performances. Um, and so, yeah, that was, you know, uh, and then Sergio, I just bounced ideas off of him and for sure was asking uh, input as far as some of the guests from Mexico, like Carla Morrison, who's a very famous singer in Mexico and, and here in the States, um, you know, yeah, and Gabby Moreno, and, and we were trying to get some other people involved as well. Um, you even went to Greece. <laughs> and we went to Greece. We were on tour, and I thought we had a day off. And, of course, our German tour manager, it's, it's the finals, right? He doesn't know that Germany's going to be in the finals, but he's, he's banking on it, right? He's probably, <laughs> he's probably got some money down or something. But I said, well, instead of going back to Germany, I know it's cheaper and easier for you, but can we just stay in Greece? 
and soak up the vibe of, of Athens, Greece. And through Ryan, Ryan had connected with this great studio called Lizard Sound Studios in, in uh, Athens, Greece. And Dimitri there, the engineer, is also a teacher, kind of like here at, at um, Robert Lang studio. And, uh, and Sergio got to hang out with Dimitri and, and check out Lizard Sound Studios. And then that led to uh, hooking up with some great uh, local traditional musicians from the group Takim. And, uh, and then later on, uh, um, Eric Burden walked in the studio, um, who's a, we, we have kind of bumped into each other over the years, but he's a fantastic guy. I mean, he's so entertaining to hear him, you know, talk and give stories. But, and he was really impressed with what was going on, so much so that on one of the tracks we had done, we sent him the tracks to uh, put some vocals on in, in his home. Yeah. So it was, uh, you know, I wanted to kind of extend that. We've, we've always wanted to record in Europe. We have equipment that's left there. And it's so easy just to, to stay and do it, but I think um, unless it's on tour, it's, it's just harder to, to go away from home that much more and that much longer, you know? So my family is just excited for when I come home, you know? They're, they're waiting at the door like, what did you bring back home? You know? <laughs> um, and I love coming back home, of course, but uh, so I have to be conscious of just how far I go and how long I stay away. Well, it's a beautiful record, Edge Thanks. of the Sun. And as you mentioned, you quite often tour with a large band, which is incredible to see. But it's very special to see this uh, stripped down set yeah, today. Yeah, it's fun to do it like this. We appreciate you coming in. And we've got some very big Calexico fans here today. And okay. we want to open it up if anyone wants to ask any questions. How did you guys get here? My, my question is for you. How did you guys get all get here? <laughs> in the middle of a day on a Thursday. You work here? Oh, great. That's awesome. <laughs> we do have, we have right. a microphone if you yeah, want to ask. Yeah, we got a question. Let's come on up to the mic so we can you. get this on video. Well, it's great to see you guys here. And uh, being in this really great and kind of legendary studio, I wanted to ask about your own kind of home studio, mm -hmm. Wave Lab, and Craig right. Schumacher that shows up on a lot of your albums. But in what's written about you guys. You know, we hear a lot about the Southwest and your influences kind of around the world, but I haven't heard a lot about Wave Lab, and I was curious, sure. what's it like? How's it influenced you? And, and how did you get involved with it originally? Sure, that's a great question, and I love talking about Wave Lab. My friend Craig Schumacher and his wife Karen Lustig have this great studio. Uh, it's, had, it's in its third location right now. It used to be right on the train tracks, just a big old warehouse. And the cool thing about that was that if the train was going by, it was either hurry up and record the song before the train comes, or hurry up so you can catch the train on the recording. And just to see, and, you know, as I'm sure, Robert, you can, you know, enjoy some of that. Yeah, I, I enjoy that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the tracks aren't that far away from us. Too. Yeah. You know, and it's, it's fun to kind of have that element of when you're in the studio and everything is kind of um, set and there's sort of a controlled environment. It's nice to have an X factor. And I think that that has carried through in the philosophy of Wave Lab Studio. So there is no um, closed off uh, control room. It's all one big open space. And that was kind of inspired by Daniel Lenoir and his studio down in uh, the French Quarter of New Orleans, Kingsway Studios, which is no longer. And um, it's a really fun way of recording. You're all together. Of course, the engineers have to be really quiet. But there's a lot of great gear, there's a great vibe, there's instruments hanging on the walls, tons of keyboards, um, and it's now he's located, Craig is located downtown, and so you can walk to all of the many new and old fantastic restaurants, including the little Poca Cosa, which is where everyone has to go if you're in downtown Tucson. It's simply the best. Um, but Craig's, uh, he's fantastic, you know, and he's, uh, he's a fantastic blues harp player too, so, Every now and then I try to, you know, find a spot for him to come in on. And um, so there was one moment on the Iron and Wine Calexico EP that there was a great, you know, moment for that. And that, that was Craig, you know. And, um, and on some of the songs on the record, like one of the songs we did live, um, it's called World Coming Undone. Ryan wasn't playing bass. He was playing some beautiful ambient um, uh, and noise ethereal guitar. And I didn't realize that we had no bass on the song. So when he was mixing the song, he just brought out this little kind of mini Moog type synthesizer and added some really cool bass to it. And so we were down in Chile touring and we got the tracks. I'm like, oh wow, where'd that come from? That's right, there's no bass. 
And I was really excited about that. And, uh, and of course, we have a, we have a very close uh, friendship for many years through the ups and downs and the lean years and the, and the big years. And, um, and Chris Schultz is, is the daily engineer, and he's fantastic. He's really, I remember working with him when he just started, and, um, and now he's really come into his own as, a, as an engineer and gets fantastic sounds. We try, to, we try not to get too, um, too comfortable you know, like try not to get too into the playing, like just let John set up the drums and I don't play any music. That way we don't kind of ruin the mood, you know, kind of create, create uh, save space for the ideas. And when people ask me what we do, I, I just try to tell them we, we try to create space, you know, with the music, with the, the perspectives of the instruments, with just the feel, the dynamics, uh, yeah, the mood of the moment. And, um, and so Wave Lab is very, easy to do that because it's just a great big open space and um, so I mean you could be anywhere in that room and um, and I love room sound and so that's always uh, a great attribute of Wave Lab Studio. That was a great question. Thanks so much for asking. Is there any other questions or things we should talk about? Maybe a children's record soon? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so you mentioned the, I mean, your, your music's really cinematic, and I know that you've had some songs show up on films before, but have you scored any stuff, or is it something that you plan on doing more of? Or? We have done some scoring, yeah. Uh, it was in 2000 that we got a call from Randall Poster. He's a pretty famous music supervisor and quite a character himself. And, uh, and we agreed to do the soundtrack to the film called Committed, which starred uh, Luke Wilson and, um, oh shoot, who was the gal who was the roller skating girl? and. Uh, Heather Graham. Heather Graham, thanks, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so they were in the movie and it looked great and um, we did the soundtrack for that and we were starting work on that the same time as starting to work on the album Hot Rail, which was our second studio record at Wave Lab. And uh, Randall called one day and asked, so how's it going? I go, well, you know, I'm kind of working on the soundtrack, kind of working on the record and, you know, the new record. And he goes, well, this is your next record. I'm like, oh, shoot. You are so right, Randall. And I got right on it, and I finished that soundtrack like that. <laughs> but it was, it was great. And, and then years later, we got asked to be a part of the Todd Haynes film, I'm Not There, which is kind of the biopic about Dylan. And one of the songs we had done was Going to Acapulco with Jim James. And then we were flown into Montreal to, to go on set. And there's Richard Gere kind of getting ready. And, and we're all you know, dressed up to look really scraggly and like we're 100 years old or something. And after, the, after, that, after that scene was done, uh, Randall and his partner, uh, Jim Dunbar, said to me, so how would you feel about recording with Willie Nelson? And I almost you know, fell down on the ground. I was like, what? Are you kidding? I hope this project never ends. <laughs> and then it was Roger McGuinn, Charlotte Gainsbourg, and uh, Sam Beam as well. Um, so those things are really fun to do. And, but we have done a couple of soundtracks, some small ones. One of my favorite ones was a film called Circo, which is about, it's a documentary about a, a, a family that is in Mexico that has a traveling Mexican circus um, act. And it's really amazing. And from that, we've got another project lined up for next year, which is uh, mapping out the migration and, and the extinction of the monarch butterflies, their path between Mexico and the United States. So, so that'd be a good one. I like doing those projects. A lot, of, a lot of times you get requests for music to be in uh, student films, which I love, and also um, you know, TV shows or, or films. It helps out. Yeah. Any other topics we should talk about? We're from uh, Tucson. Has anyone ever been to Tucson? A couple of you? All right, cool. Wow, you too. All right. Way to go, Justin. Go ahead. Anytime I get a chance to ask musicians a scintillating question, I ask them about food and beverages that inspire you while you're writing and recording. <laughs> Lyle Lovett said Cheerios. So what do you have to say about that? Well, I would ask Lyle, what do you pair that with? <laughs> <laughs> do you pair that with Riesling or with uh, <laughs> Sauvignon Blanc? Tequila, that's a good one. There was this, there's this guy, this kind of wine TV personality. I think his website is wine TV. His name's Gary Vaynerchuk. You guys ever heard of him? He's kind of a, he's, he's really very excited and very enthusiastic. And his big thing was pairing uh, Captain Crunch cereal with Riesling. Yeah. 
I haven't tried it yet, but um, <laughs> next time I see Eli, I'll love it. If I ever see him, I will ask him if he wants to try some of that. Um, well, when traveling to Mexico City, one of the benefits is that there's fantastic food all around us. And um, we had a friend of ours uh, make some arrangements to have food brought in and cooked in the kitchen in this house we were staying in. So it was just from morning till you know, late afternoon, early evening, it was just incredible food. Same thing in New Orleans, one of the roommates of the living room studio, which is one of my favorite studios. And Robert, you gotta check this place out because I know you love studios. I will. And these guys are so amazing. It's called the Living Room Studio, and I'll write it down for you later, but fantastic place. It's an old church. It's an old Baptist church. It's all wood. It's basically like a, a bass drum, you know, just up off the ground, resonating, you know, and... Uh, and where and is it? It's in New Orleans. New Orleans. It's in Algiers Point, right across okay. the river. And it's a really cool place. You can stay there. There's plenty of space, like, like here, where you can just kind of pull up a sleeping bag and camp out. And... Uh, but yeah, great cooking, you know. Um, we had the best food. Again, you know, cooking from morning until late afternoon. And that, more than anything, I think, really inspires the musicians to, okay, we better make this a good take because I'm hungry, man. I want to get out there and I want to eat some of that barbecue. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but uh, I do love traveling and I like to meet uh, people that are uh, cooking or, or, or gardening or especially making wine. That's been my, my, my big thing. And so we've been able to meet some really interesting people. In Napa, one of my favorite winemakers and new friends is Steve Mathiason. And uh, their house survived the earthquake, but they had jacket up and poor new foundation. It's a 100-year-old house in the middle of this um, kind of 70s uh, subdivision. They've got uh, orchards there, and they've got, of course, grapes. And they make exquisite wines, a red and a white blend. And uh, those are the things that I really kind of get into. So when I come home, I, I'll bring the gifts for the girls, and then I'll pull out the wine for my wife and I. <laughs> and then it's business time. <laughs> to, quote, to quote somebody else. Yeah. Any other questions about wine? Iron and wine? Going once, going twice? We got some pretty good Washington State wines. Yeah, some great, great wines up here for sure. I'm just starting to get into some of the Oregon wines, and, um, and every now and then we get to play at a winery, and then, you know, it's a win-win situation there. <laughs> just got to wait till after the show. Yeah, but it really is fun to get to travel to places and, um, and just see other cultures, and that for sure has always been a big influence on the aesthetic of the band, um, whether it's, you know, the instrumentation or just, you know, we have a member from our group that's from Madrid, Spain, you know, and he claims that Spain has the best food and wine, so you, know, you always have to go up against that. And then, of course, whenever we go to Italy, he kind of quiets down a little bit. <laughs> and that's, that's Jairo Zavala. He's, he's quite a treat to hang out with. And then we have a German trumpet player we've been playing with since 1998, and he lives in Berlin now. And, uh, you know, Germany has some pretty good wines. We mentioned Rieslings earlier. But uh, it's nice to have that kind of international element. And uh, just yesterday, I came on the bus and everyone was talking about the Euro and about what's going on over there. And, and it's all kind of related, you know. Some of these similar themes are happening uh, worldwide. So it's a concern of everyone. And I like the fact that, you know, the people in the band are concerned about those things. We all have families and taxes to pay. <laughs> Well, should we play another song? What do you think? Um, we're talking about Sam Beam, and um, we're going to see him. Uh, he's got a covers album with Ben Bridwell. I didn't know that they were really good friends and live near each other, but uh, I was really happy to have both of them involved on this new record. This next song features Sam on the record, and um, this is called Bullets and Rocks. Dust. The future 
just deal on bullets and rocks. They'll search, they'll see, they'll find it one day. There's work to do and miles to feed. Why can't you see this plaintive plea? The future stars. Thank you all so much for coming today. You guys are amazing. I wish I could just pick you up and take you with us. And go camping on the coast with my whole family. Um, we're going to do one more song. This is Cumbia de Donde. And it's going to feature Sergio's world here of cables, wires, and boxes. You think it's going to work? Yeah. Cool. <laughs> yeah, you can just sway back and forth. Thanks again for having us, KEXP. You know you're one of our favorite radio stations in the whole wide world. Way to go. And congrats on the new move. Good luck with everything. We hope we can help you know, raise some funds to uh, make that happen sooner than later. Yeah, you bet. Where am I going? Don't they hear? Sure. 
Muchísimas gracias por todo. Gracias Roberto, Lang. Thanks to Jackin, Jackson, thanks to Justin and everybody. Thanks to KEXB. Thank you. Thank you so much. We would love for you to take us on the road with you, and I think you're going to need us as backup on that song. We are. <laughs> we are really going to need you tonight. <laughs> Edge of the Sun is such a beautiful record. Each of the songs is like a little gift and a surprise when you open it up. And what a beautiful record. Thank you for this incredible special performance today. You're welcome. Thanks for coming, everybody. It it's our pleasure. Again, such Ryan a treat. Alfred on the bass. It's here for Ryan. Woo! Sergio Mendoza on the piano. I'm Joey Burns. Thank you for having us here today. Thank you.
Thank you. It's bands like you that make being KEXP such a wonderful experience and bringing you together with our listeners and donors is such a heartwarming experience. And we have the best listeners and donors in the world. And to bring you together like this at Robert Lang Studios, a historic space, yeah. it's just nothing like it. Yeah, thank you. And thanks to Robert, huh? Let's hear from yeah. Roberto. <laughs> and thank you, Marley. And Zapato. And actually, speaking to Marley, besides being an historic recording studio, they actually have education programs here. And Marley wanted to tell you a little bit about that, if anyone's interested in knowing more about that. Yeah. Come on, Marley. Hi, Marley. Hi, everyone. Hey, thanks, thanks for, for coming us. today. Thank you, Calexico and KXP. We love having you guys here. And just awesome music, awesome audience. So thank you very much. Um, if you want more information on our education program, um, we offer a one-year program for aspiring engineers and producers. You can check it out on www.robertlangstudios.com and the recording page. So you can learn how to record bands like this in this setting, and it's a pretty powerful experience. So thanks again. Thanks. Thank you, Marty. If you guys have any other questions and you want to go outside and get some fresh air, you know, we'll be around for a little bit. I know we have to go to Soundcheck pretty soon, but if anybody wants a signature or anything like that for, um, for whatever it might be, but if you want to say hello, we'll be around packing up here. Thank you so much. Thank you. And thanks for bringing your kids. That just really makes it complete for me. So thank you, all of your families here. Have a good day. Discover new music at listenerpoweredkexp.org.